nice. Now we did a Mert patron variant, one of them, and just got tons of perks and stuff. So I think we're gonna do Vajra. We're gonna do Vajra, and it's always, the first one is always Ragged Dragon's Crew. Uh, so we're gonna do Ragged Dragon Crew for Vajra. Uh, I gotta build a formation because we haven't we haven't done Vajra here. So we're gonna make that and we're gonna get that going. Get that going. You have to hit 187 every run. No, just the first Bard's Forge, and then you don't want to go over it. And then you don't want to go over it. So you want this number in blue here, your damage, which is based off your bud. You want your bud to hit 187. Now it could be a little less, it could be 185, it might even be able to be 200. I usually, it was somewhere between 185 and 200. I just like 187 as a good number that I can remember. Uh, I remember it from rap music, but it was also in the movie. <laughs> it was also in a movie. <laughs> and everybody else remembers it from the movie. Uh, so it's just a good, it's a good way to, to think about it there. Okay, we want, we want as much speed people as possible. Uh, yeah, okay. And we can't do her. I'll do her, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, go away for a second. Let me get, let me get some people out of here first. You jerk. You jerk. Uh, who's going to bring your DPS? Immense, probably. Which makes no sense, but that's fine. Um, and we're going to do a star in the bottom. Starring in the bottom, where he likes to be. Uh, we're going to go damage a star in. Come back to that one. Do you have any hops? Did we earn any hops? Wrong button. And we got a little bit of hops. All right, we'll go. Springs. Gonna keep them, keep them away, keep them away, keep them away now. Lots of crowd control effects. Um, that's lots of charisma. Lots of heals. Where am I going after that? I would want Penelope, but but we're in Avernus, and if we're on a war machine, she does not. It's not good. It's not good, folks. It's not good. Wait, boom. Let's go. Give me speed effects. And 575... Who are we missing? We're missing Diane. And, uh, yeah, we're pretty. Yep, and there's the, there's the car. When we're on these vehicles, you can't have Penelope in your formation. <laughs> Currently. Uh, for some reason, her swarms will interact with things that are off the cars when they're not supposed to right now. They're going to fix that. They're going to fix that because it's not supposed to work that way. Farm time. I just started last week. I want to tell you, I appreciate all the guys, right? You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, this is not my main account. This is a new account. We're on day 61 of it, hence the stream title. Uh, so, you know, this is what 61 days of progress in could look like for you on a free to play account. Um. And all the all the VODs from this get uploaded to my YouTube page, so people can always reference the playthrough. They're all in order that we did them, but you don't have to do them in that order. But I'm going to be updating my new player reference. That's one of the things I'm doing here. So if you if you're following that guide, it's going to get an update soon as well. But it's fine in its current format. It's maybe just I don't know. The game has changed a little bit with Events 2.0 in terms of the order things get. Uh, 
but things kind of unlock, like that you get access to things, get access to some things quicker, and so I've, I'm revamping that guide, and it should be way better once I'm done, but it's, that's not going to be out anytime soon, because it's just going to be vastly, the format's going to change, so I kind of, maybe I can work a little bit on that today. I haven't got a legendary crafting yet, but I understand it adds an extra effect on an item. Correct. Legendary effects. <laughs> or Legos. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub, Tarn. Much appreciated. Um, if you have a pigment on the item, such as a support pigment, and legendary craft it will remove the pigment. No, it, it just adds another buff. All that stuff just, yeah. It's just yet another buff. Uh, once, like Wednesday, I'll be able to demonstrate because uh, Wednesday I will have some scales of Tiamat and I will be able to uh, craft, forge a legendary item, technically. We'll see. They can only go on epics, so... Um, yeah, I mean, we'll probably end up with one on Briv. And he's got a pigment. But basically, it's just gonna... The pigment's gonna stay there. It's gonna add another effect to this scrolling list, and... And life goes on. Yeah, you don't waste anything here in this game. They did a good job about that. You don't waste... Uh, well, you can waste item levels, but in a really weird edge case that you don't have to worry about early on in the game. That's a more late game thing to worry about. Um, but pigments are always going to be good. Uh, they're always going to be on the item. Uh, legendary effects, you know, on the item. Uh, even if, like, you, sh you get a shiny on something, like I got a shiny here. Um, if you then get an epic version, cause, or, or a golden version which would be a golden epic on this item. Uh, it refunds you back the shiny by a potion of polish. So like, again, not wasted. You're not wasting that uh, shiny. It's great. I just want one guy needs a minor update to the Electrum chest section to mention Diana. Oh, that you can get some Electrums via Diana. Ugh. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Hey, Moses. Hold on. Let me, let me make a note, or else I, I will forget. Oh, no, that's D&D &D backstory. That's what I'm going to do. To-do list. One. All right, I've made a note, so it's on my to-do list. Are blacksmith items permanent? Like blacksmith contra? Oh, the item levels from them. Yes, that's that's permanent. That's that's the one of the two ways to get permanent power on your champion so like if i come over here to contracts here's small blacksmithing uh, i'm currently putting in on whittle so you'll see i've got 36 31 30 32 41 29 this this is what's been i'm doing this because i want to permanently boost the power on this item and even if the, when this goes from a green to a blue the levels that i have earned stay because these are item slots and in an item slot, you can have uh, an item with a rarity, so white through purple. You can have item levels. These are all different multipliers. Item levels. You can have gilding. Uh, you can have pigments. Uh, you can have a legendary effect. I feel like I'm missing something. But you can have a bunch of stuff that, that sits in the item slot itself. Uh, and you don't, you don't lose anything from that. Uh, the key to remember with blacksmithing contracts is to use them on 
I'm going to hold on to those for now. Is to use them on event champions. Strong event champions you're going to be using. And not on your core and evergreen. Because the core and evergreen are going to get item levels on their own. Like here's a Zaka with 50, 60 item levels. I haven't given her any blacksmithing contracts. This is just from opening silver and gold chests. That's all. Many and virus. Uh, there you go. JMB say put the command in chat. You can copy it out of there. Otherwise, it's up there on the screen, right up there. Thon Sofa Mojo. Eobart Thon sleeping on the sofa because he lost his mojo. There we go. We made it work. It's a flash reference. Does Diana Mop? Yes. Let's see in your Blacksmithy Contracts 101 page, because she's new. Adding that to the list. All right. So, one on one, add Diana. There. Yeah, she's a brand new champion, so brand new champions don't, you know. I don't necessarily, when they drop, don't immediately go out and try to find every single guy that I have to update for them. I'm usually just trying to bake their guide and make sure it's accurate, which reminds me I need to go in and add legendary effects to Diana's guide. I don't know if I did that even. Got that on the to-do list. Got that on the to-do list as well now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some guide says to open silver till I put was green, then open gold. Do I go back to silver chest every time I get a new green evergreen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh I mean, you know, you, you shouldn't have to buy them. You should just be looting lots of silvers. But yeah, you, you know, reg pretty regularly. Like I just opened some silvers that I just looted. Uh when you're when you're getting near to unlocking another evergreen, you know, just to save up about 25 silvers. 20, somewhere between 20 and 30, but you know, 25 to 30, let's say. Uh, that should be enough to get that evergreen up to greens and then then dump those, then, you know, pop your golds or however many silvers, you know, if you have way more silvers, pop those because there's a chance you could get blues too. But yeah, you just don't want to use electrums on your, your, your evergreen unlocks. Because you're going to need all of those you can get to get your event champions to blue or better. Well, to blue. Silver mm -hmm. only drops gear for evergreens and never non-evergreens. Correct. Well, regular silvers, like... like so if we, we come over here uh, in the chest shop, silver chest, three cards between common and rare gear for non-event champions. So that's your core and your evergreens. Gold, regular gold chest from gems, five cards between uncommon and epic for gear for non-event champions. So these will only ever give you gear for your core and evergreen champions. Um, it's like Electrums. Electrums will drop gear for any champion you own. So that's why you want to you want to save those to gear up event champion. And your silvers and golds are for your, your cores and your evergreens. Like right now I'm buying tons of gold chests. In fact, here, let's just go, I'm gonna go buy one. Um, and opening them repeatedly because I'm I'm on the hunt for full epic. Uh, oh, large potion of speed, nice. Uh, I'm on the hunt to get all my core and evergreens full epic. Just so they have that power. I've got one already, Brunor. Uh, as you can see, Azaka's one away. I've got like four or five others that are like one away. I didn't go so fast on a 61 day old account. I feel like I'm missing so much. Dr. Tulipan, welcome to chat. Um, I, I've, I've made choices that involve speed champions. So I've got Sentry here. I've got... Well, Briv's jumping occasionally, and he might be out of jumps now. Oh, he is out of jumps. Shandy's speeding up the game like a speed potion is. Uh, Minsk is occasionally spawning an extra enemy. Human's giving me extra credit when I when I for quest collection stuff. These are those are all speed effects. I've also got a, a large speed potion running. 
So all of that is making my game go faster. Thankfully, because it's, it's just so much nicer <laughs> when it's faster. Which only works for this game. That does not work at now all places. Uh, yeah. And then I'm killing everything instantly with click damage because I have a bunch of favor here. I've got what? E E33 favor here. I can't buy anymore. Oh, but I unlocked the stuff down here. Damage on champions. Well, an adventure that starts an Eltrail of Avernus. Yeah. Interesting. And then they end up costing the same. 1% for each completed. I don't, I don't care about that. I want these. Nice. 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 This is, I mean, we can do that, but it's not much. I have six. <laughs> I don't care. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I've got a lot of things that are, that are helping me go fast. You, you get there eventually. There's a lot of speed champions in the game. I'm actually, I don't have Diana available. She's a speed champ that would make this go even faster. Uh, I'm not, I don't have Whittle available. She would make this go faster. What happens if you cap all your Evergreen Champion gear levels? There is no cap, generally speaking, currently in the game. There are certain items have caps, like you'll see. To the top right of this item, you'll see a 53 out of 501 for levels. This is an ultimate cooldown reduction item, and those items have caps. Because you can only ever reduce the cooldown on an item by 75% at most. Um... So like Brunor starts out with a 60 second cooldown on his ultimate. And if you cap his slot six item, then he has a 15 second cooldown on his ultimate. Uh, there are also some speed items that have caps. You see right here on uh, Human, slot four, 127 out of 16, 15. Certain speed functionality is capped for reasons, for good reasons. Um, some still isn't and should be. Uh, but those are the those are the times you'll see a cap is like a ultimate cooldown reduction or speed item currently they don't, none of the others are capped so when you when you cap an item uh, duplicate items just will not drop on that slot anymore they'll drop on the rest of the champions items uh, and blacksmithing contract item levels won't go to the capped item it'll go to the others so yeah And if for some reason, like, say you cap out a, a slot six ultimate cooldown reduction on a regular epic at 501, and then you get a natural shant, and you get a shiny potion that falls on it, or, or a natural shiny or a shiny potion on it, I don't know why you potion it, but you get it, you, you end up with a shiny, so it's gilded. That would drop the, the cap down to 251, and those 250 extra item levels you'd get refunded as blacksmithing contracts. Oh, yeah, I should say, this is a 61-day-old account. I have been playing basically since week two of the game, and the game's been out for six years. Over six years. Bad puns should be capped. No, we don't cap the power of bad puns around here. Uncapped potential there. And honestly, those tend to mop, so. <laughs> no account, I've been looking at Lazel as a first champ and open up and lean into absolute adversaries. I mean, if, if you have that, like the people that got that giveaway, um, it creates both a, a, a fast team, progression-wise, because of Lazel's speed effect, interacting with tadpoles, uh, and a decently powerful team. I'm not going to say it's, you know, always, I don't know, I, I, we were talking about this the other day, I don't think the full Absolute Adversaries team is really the way to go. 
Um, but using some of them can be can be great. Just remember that as you pick up speed champions uh, after, if it lays out as your first, after that, there are certain speed champions that don't interact with Lazelle. Like, Humon does not interact with Lazelle. Uh, so you wouldn't want someone who gives extra credit like Humon. Or uh, or someone like Sentry or BBG that reduces, or Nahara, that reduce, like, quest requirements. That ain't, that ain't her thing. She wants Sentry for general speed. She wants Briv for jumping. She wants, like... Uh, uh, Deacon for spawn speed, Vi for you know that kind of stuff. Any extra extra enemies out at once, like yeah. she has a different uh, kind of speed focus in her group. Ad break. Ad break. <laughs> E71, E81, click damage, okay. Where are we going? 575, that's right. Now that I've powered up my modem core, we might be able to get closer to that with just this team. That'd be nice. Don't want your, you don't want your team to be absolutely adversaries. Yes, that's true. I think we're back from the ad break. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh. Found that they were great at first with the free pack, but as I progress, they have a lot of availability issues for variants. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you're a new player, in all honesty, you shouldn't, you know, I, I don't, I recommend not leaning into lots of variants early on. I've done very few variants on this account. I know I'm doing a variant right now and a patron variant, but this is because I'm in Baldur's Gate of Descend into Avernus, which is the first place I stopped to do a mini patron grind. But as far as patrons go, I've done six for Mert. This will be six for Vajra. Only done two for Strahd, so it'll be my third when I do this one for Strahd. Um, I don't put a lot of value early on into grinding patron stuff when there's more efficient ways to do it. To get what you need early on. Couldn't even escort chickens. Oh, yeah, you don't look. They, it's called Arya Chicken for a reason, okay? It's a dare. They're daring you, and you shouldn't you shouldn't take the dare. Come back later. Like there's a point when you have more favor where you can just click right through that and it doesn't even matter, but you don't attempt it early on. Yeah, it's one of the harshest lessons in this game, and you should probably take a look at it. Uh, and maybe change it. because uh, I feel like I don't know. I mean, they've got the metrics on whether people bounce after trying that variant or not. Like, how many people bounce out of the game, but... It's just the worst possible variant to introduce people to, to variants. The tickets were tipped. <laughs> um... It's a, it's a, it's a strong, it's an important lesson in, in like restrictions. One of the harshest restrictions you can have in this game is to have, is to be down champions because you're, 
you've got your formation taken up with escorts is what we call them um so it's an early lesson in like wow you really gotta you gotta read the 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 book cover before you hop in because otherwise you're gonna get wrecked because that's exactly what happens you get wrecked you get wrecked um we're gonna, we're gonna click i'm gonna click it okay so i'm transitioning from click damage into a fire breath potion to kill with click damage but it's it's bud based click damage now so the health got up to E89, and my click damage was less than that, so... But my bud is in the E140s and is on a Starion right now? What? What did I do? Okay. Is it a Mazaka thing? It's probably a Mazaka. Oh, no, it's... It's a Cridal thing. Final thing. Now it's better. It should. Well, okay, never mind. He was he was doing way better damage. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. It's fine. It'll be fine. Welcome to the weirdness of uh, the Idle Champion's damage values. There we go. There's 150s. Good lord. The time gate and got an event champion? Yeah, you did. I pricked freely, so I hope he's decent. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a better option in his slot. Uh, he's got a debuff and he's got a gold find. Both of them are on hit, though, so, you know, you gotta actually... He, he kicks in more towards the end of your run. He's also going to boost your favor totals. If you, if you put him in at the start of your run and do your whole run with him, like a deep favor run, the, uh, he uses the number of areas he was in your formation in that adventure to give you a bonus to your to your favor when you complete it. So he's good to have in uh, on deep favor runs. He used to be my go like my go-to pick in his slot, but the Caddy Bree got a rework, some other things happened, and so I don't necessarily uh, rate him as highly, but it's not because he got nerfed or anything. It's just some other people showed up that are better, so he's he's still a great pickup early on. <laughs> With me. Do you have Dinah hair, Spectre? Dinah hair is the only way Minsk tanks. Minsk is not a tank. Minsk is a Minsk is a DPS support speed. Uh, swap them at the end to get the area count. I that's super manual. You're gonna have to try it. I don't know if it works that way, but I, I just put freely in. I just I just use freely. If I'm gonna use freely, I'm gonna use freely. Uh, Freely's a better support than Minsk. He just is. I use freely, freely. Yes. If I'm gonna put freely in, I use him freely. So what we're doing here, just for those who don't know, we're going to get a ton of influence. 3.76 EO6 influence. 
which if it does this, which, you know, similar to Mert, I did that and it shot me all the way down into, into dipping into tier five uh, on blessings. So we're going to go from this all the way down there. And in fact, let's, let's reset this for pushing in her stuff. Yeah, that's better. Be a little, trying to be efficient. I don't know if I have enough to really make this manual. Two more to get to tier three. Oh, I do. There we go. Okay. So, uh, hopefully when I get this done, we'll be able to jump all the way down here and, and get these and some more of this stuff. And end up at, at that with just with just one variant. That's why I don't really do a lot of patron stuff until I get here to Baldur's Gate because it becomes super easy. There's six variants that you can do that are super straightforward. Ragged Dragus Crew is the first, and they get you just a ton of patron influence and currency, of course. But currently, I'm at the point where my currency is self-sustaining. Uh, via doing, I just, I park a champion with two familiars in a background in a, in a patron's thing. And that gets me my challenges. I do that during, while I'm doing active runs and then overnight, I will put in a set of champions like this, Bruno and Ellie Calliope. I'll do this overnight. So like tonight I will switch this to terror in the dark and I, with Bruno and Ellie and Calliope. And it'll get me this challenge and this challenge without me needing to, to be at the keyboard. And it'll get me credit down here. So I do my patron challenges that way. I do them passively, uh, either in the background while I'm actively playing or, or overnight. I don't actively play any of them. It's just kind of a, feels like a, a waste of time to actively work on that stuff. Now, because I am doing a, a Vajra variant, if I, if I happen to be doing something that got me credit, hey, all the better. All the better. Rigby. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Jason wouldn't get that joke, or, or he'd be the one to pull that off. We get Dino here. Dino here is a, a event a event champion, so from a time gate. I wouldn't necessarily chase her, but you do you. You do you. She's a. Uh, she's one of the more recent. Come on, I'll remember the bottom. There we go. Fleet's Wake, but you could pick her up out of. She's a C three champion. You could pick her up out of a time gate. She came out uh, right before. No, uh, oh, yeah, take this. Uh, right before. I started this account basically. It was like the last regular event champ, events 1.0 champion, I think. So I didn't, I didn't grab her on purpose. Do people think the time value tipping point is for farming dark urge kills? I don't know because I don't actually find him to be a, a very good DPS. So, to me, the point is, I, the time value is zero. And what, just whatever he accrues passively is what he's going to get, because I'm not going to farm him. Yeah. But there are other people who are like, my, my Dark Urge is amazing, the best on my account. And I'm like, I don't understand what's going on on your account to make that happen, because... On two different, uh, on, on this account and my main account, Carlock absolutely destroys the Dark Urge. <laughs> Even with worse gear, 
and no Zerial variants. So, kind of like Torgar. I mean, I stacked Torgar up to his max. Uh, but I think that was in a group party because I was, I think I was doing, I was doing Dahani as well. So I just went ahead and threw Torgar in with Dahani and, and it was fine. It was might as well because I was going to do it. I was going to do a stack farm anyway. Uh, on a Chumbawamba variant. That was a Twilight Twist. That was back in the Twilight Twist days. Twilight twist again, like we did last summer. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, just throw them in when you work on, yeah. Throw them in when you, if you're working on Torgar, you throw them in when you're working on Torgar or Dahani. Or whatever. Well, Dahani maybe not. So, well, I don't know. You gotta figure that out. Why do I have multiple accounts? Um, because I make guides for the game. So, my main account, if all I ever do is play my main account, then it's very hard for me to make guides that are useful to newer players because I, have, I would have zero perspective on what the new player experience is in this game. So, at least once a year, I try to start up a new account, and I play it for a while. We're actually going to play this one a little longer than I normally do, because I'm usually just trying to play through the new, the, the early game. Uh, and Trials, for me, is the demarcation point of now you're in the mid-game. But we're going further this time, because there's some other guides I want to... I want to work on, I want to finish the, the new player guide and kind of get people into a path into the mid-game. So step them into the mid game with that guide a little more than just dumping them uh, unceremoniously. Because <laughs> I don't have a mid a mid game guide. That's uh, much more difficult. I do have a Gara's Guide to the Mid Game, which is a video on the CD Games YouTube channel. But if you watch it, you'll understand why a written guide for that is much more difficult. Um, but I do want to I do want to get to split the party three. Um, to add that to uh, as an addendum to my split the party guide, uh, and I want to check out a couple other things. Like we're testing, can I do the seven day easily, and how how can I recommend people you know get build a guide for that? So that's why I make new new accounts regularly. But I don't then play it forever. There are people that do that. There are people that play the whole game through again on another account, and that's fine. If that's how they want to. If that's what they want to do, I got a lot of other games I want to play. <laughs> But uh, it's a it's a different experience. It's just an, it's a different experience from the main. It's not that I'm necessarily bored on my main. I'm not even completely done with everything on my main. Uh, it's just it's more that I I want to be able to keep my guides fresh um, and helpful because they're really targeted. My guides are really targeted at newer players or at players who are running into systems in the game for the first time. And so this is uh, good for that. A lot of a lot of late game and end game players like to think they know what the new game, like the early game is like, but all what they're doing is remembering what it was like when they were there and it it changes. Like it just changed in a big way with the new events 2.0 system. And so I'm having to rework some guides because of that. Value of time gate pieces is huge with 2.0. It's definitely it's definitely different. Um I, what I will say right now is you get to, uh, hey, are for you, uh, you get to patrons so much faster with events 2.0, um, and it's so much more important that you unlock them right away when you get there and get your time gate pieces from them, 
so that you can make sure that when the events roll around, you've got those three time gate pieces the second and the third week. Uh, yeah. So there's definitely a different... It's definitely a different value placed on that. And also it's made, you know, unlocking your patrons more important. Prepping for that, making sure you're ready the moment you get there. But it's more for new new players. I feel like late game. Uh, I mean, hey, at least you're spinning on something, but chocolate oozing on me as I put something in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Chocolate oozing on me. Chocolate teapot sounds like something that's absolutely useless. I think that's the reference, Noobles. I think that's what Lurking Rider is trying to say. You know, if you made a teapot out of chocolate, filled it with water, put it on the stove, <laughs> it would not help you make tea. <laughs> it will not help you make tea. And so, you know. So right now, yeah, time gate pieces on for late game accounts. Once you have all the champions, it's just like, what am I supposed to do with all of these? What do I do with all of these? Like it's. I don't know. Yes! That's what we always want to see. We always want to see speed potions when we open chests. We got 180s versus the 150s. And, okay. okay, just my firebreak potion wore off and I didn't notice. That's my bad. That's my bad. These time get pieces whenever you want, but did you say we should save them for the free weekend? Um, no, like I just used, I just spent six of them today. But, um, if it's almost Friday and you've got six, you want to wait until you see what the natural time beat has to offer in case it offers you for free what you would have chosen anyway, right? And then just do the manual one afterwards. Uh, so like I'm back up to four because I was down to I had seven, I spent six today. We got entrees, and then I got my three. I got one from each of my patrons, so I'm back up to four. So by Friday, Friday Saturday, I'll have uh, another manual time gate I can run, but the natural time gate's on Friday, so I'll be picking up two more champions. So this is a, a champion. This is a week I get three champions. I get to pick up three champions, which is nice. Their point in doing trials alone, yes, like I'm doing here. Um, there are two achievements that you're get, that you can basically guarantee yourself to get if you if you get your damage to to one eight seven ish. There's a little variance. I think it's between one eighty five and two hundred. Um, you can get two different achievements. Uh, you can get one, and they're now in here somewhere. Uh, what else have you got? Reach the daily area goal in any trial seven times in one campaign. So we're doing all seven days. Uh, and then she isn't so tough. Contribute the most DPS of your group to the assault team at the end of the week in a Trials Amount TMI campaign. Well, doing it solo, you're guaranteed to get this. So I should probably use this. I'll do that when we have a group. 
so yeah, you're, you're basically you're getting two uh, achievements that normally might be really might be potentially difficult to get. You're getting them out of the way on the first run, and you're getting an understanding of uh, of how trials works. So, yeah. But after that, you want to do it in groups. After you grab those that pair of achievements, or at least the seven day one, uh, back to group play. Giggity. Giggity. Powdered water. I mean, dehydrated water where you just add water. Yeah. It's the next thing that companies are going to sell us. They already sell us bottled water that if you test it is just tap water that they got in your same area and then put in a bottle and sold it to you. It's the next thing. <laughs> Powdered water. Just add water. Oh, a canned air. I don't think they'll ever bottle air, but we'll get canned air one day. Right? <laughs> For those who are younger, uh, it's a space balls. Space balls reference. Oh, uh, we do have canned air. I, well, I, well, I don't know if it's air. I mean the the compressed air cans that I used to clean out my computer. That's isn't that a, isn't that based off a liquid that aerosolizes? I don't know. Uh, hmm. Nettie Kirby so Rocky Mountain air flight. Oh no! Someone went full space. Look, uh, never go full space balls. Never go, yeah, Perrier. Never go full space balls. <laughs> Just warning you now. The only space balls we want is space balls the breakfast cereal. Space balls the 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 stuffed character. Look, it's me. And space balls the flamethrower. Those are those are three space balls we'll take, but but when we're talking about Spaceballs stuff, canned air is not one we want. Yeah, no, I get that situation, Spectre. It's just... There are literally places in the United States where... Water bottling companies have set up shop and they take tap water. Like, they take from the regular water supply. They don't do anything to it bottle it and sell it to the same people in that area and it's ridiculous you could just get it out of your but yeah i know i completely understand if you've got like lead pipes or if you're in a well i grew up in a well water system that stuff like the sulfur sometimes oh mm. i get it Uh, equipment change color based on the item level? No, rarity. You have to find a, a better rarity. Item levels just go up on their own. That's just a power thing that, that maintains across rarities. But if you want, uh, rarities give, different rarities give different multipliers. You gotta get the better items. Spaceballs the Twitch comment. Hey, we completed Ragged Dragon's crew for Vajra. Excellent. Excellent.